Hey everyone, my name is Sam and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below or give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down or whatever works for you. So this month I had a really good reading month. I found a lot of like good reads and surprise reads. So in total I managed to read 29 books this month. I was shooting for 30 just because I had most of the month off from work, but I'm still really really happy with 29. So this month I read Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend, Earth's End by Elise Kova, the third book in the Air Awaken series, Shatter Me by Tahara Mothi, the first book in the Shatter Me series. I'm not sure how big this series is going to be getting. The Glass Spare by Lauren Stefano, The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, Elias Hook by Lisa Jensen, Speak Easy, Speak Love by Mikkel George, Beast Made of Night by Tochi Onyebuchi, Dear Martin by Nick Stone, The Dire King by William Ritter, the fourth book in the Jacoby series, Traitor Angels by Anne Blankman, Renegades by Marissa Meyer, The Wizards of Once by Cressida Cowell, Black Hearts by Nicole Kastroman, The Last Neanderthal by Claire Cameron, The Magic Misfits by Neil Patrick Harris, The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison, The Last Samsara by Kristen Cicerelli, the first book in the Iscari series, Lost in a Book by Jennifer Donnelly, Refugee by Alan Gratz, Uprooted by Naomi Novik, A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn, the first book in the Veronica Speedwell series, a Perilous Undertaking by Deanna Rayborn, book two in the Veronica Speedwell series. These Vicious Masks by Tayroon Shanker and Kelly Zikas. This is the first book in These Vicious Masks trilogy. These Ruthless Deeds by the same author. It's book two in the These Vicious Masks series. Serafina by Rachel Hartman, book one in the Serafina duology. Maplecroft by Sherry Priest. The Dark Days Club by Allison Goodman, the first book in the Lady Helen series. And Timekeeper by Tara Sim. Now to rank my favorite ones is kind of difficult because I have like quite a few here. So I switched a couple to sit under the books that surprised me most. So I had just like one favorite. So absolutely my hands down favorite book this month was Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. I had high hopes for it. I had heard nothing but good things. The summary sounded interesting. It's been compared to Harry Potter and Percy Jackson. And with those sort of hypes, I was kind of like just bracing myself to be disappointed, but I was not. This book was fantastic. I don't care if it's a middle grade. It's just so, so, so good. So good. I loved it and I cannot wait for the next books. The author currently has it signed up to be a trilogy through publishers, but she says she has a plan for nine books. So this could literally be like the next Harry Potter. And I'm so here for this. I'm, I'm so here for the ride, the characters, the story, the writing was really cool. And I love the cover. The US cover is really, really pretty. And kind of along the same wavelength, I'd heard nothing but hype about this book until I said that I didn't like it. And then people were like, oh, it gets better after the first book. So easily, hands down, without a single doubt in my mind, the worst book that I read this month was Shatter Me by Tahara Mafi. I'm sorry if you liked this book. I'm glad that you enjoy what you read. But I hated this book. It is literally everything I hate and despise about YA wrapped up into a single book with a necessary amount of metaphors and talking by the author that in no way contributed to the story or to develop the characters. It was just super flowery. I didn't like the romance. I didn't like the characters. I didn't like the world. It wasn't really well described for me. Oh. I just I honestly don't know that I the one good thing was I managed to amuse myself while reading this I was determined to finish it and I kept making jokes that made myself laugh you know I was debating going on with unravel me because I already owned it but just kind of as I kept thinking about it all month I was like I don't ever want to revisit this realm there was nothing about it that I liked so I'm just not going to be continuing on with the series now for books that surprised me I just couldn't get rid of any of these three because they're all so good so the first book that I was absolutely blown away by and surprised by was speak easy speak love by Mikkel George. I've heard nothing of this book. It randomly showed up, I think, on Indigo when I was wandering around the site and said, like, based off of your last purchases. And this was there. And I saw the cover was like, that looks cool. It is a retelling of Much Ado About Nothing in Prohibition Era near New York City. And it is so good. It's amazing. I can't say enough good things about it. I sent it to my friend Meg for Christmas and she read it like the day after she got it. And she read it in like a single day. And she too was like, this is the greatest book ever written. So yeah, this book is super underhyped and it was so good and I just didn't know what to expect. And oh, it was just so cool and so well written. This is a debut work as well. It just totally surprised me, blew me out of the water. And the other books that surprised me honestly came just like totally out of left field. Once again, there's been like no hype of it. I hadn't seen anyone mention it on booktube even on like bookstagram, nothing. So I was very apprehensive. I was just like very unsure of exactly what I was getting myself into. But 
A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn, as well as the sequel, A Perilous Undertaking. I literally read both of these books on Christmas Day, like both of them, because I didn't want to put them down. They're so, so good, and I cannot believe there's not more hype about it with all of our love of, like, My Lady Jane and A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. It is historical fiction. It is comedy. There's a strong female character. She is blunt. It's like Sheldon Cooper and Temperance Brennan, like, kind of combined into a single human being in, like, Victorian era England and oh, I just cannot say enough good things about that series I am so excited for book three and I need something to happen between her and Stoker because oh. and once again I convinced my friend Meg to read them and she loved them so high five to me and to Deanna Rayborn for writing this awesome character who is now easily one of my favorite characters in fiction. So I mean, we read books to learn things and feel things. So I, whilst reading, like to kind of like write down all of the things that books tell me. Nevermore the Trials of Morgan Crow taught me two things. Never ever follow a strange voice into a sewer, but also the fact that we do not have a Halloween or party store in this world called Cauldrons R Us is a missed opportunity. Shatter Me taught me that enslaving someone does not disqualify them from being your romantic partner. It also reminded me that books are like music. They can get so ridiculous that you want to just keep finishing it. It's like Barbie Girl by Aqua. It went like around from being ridiculous to, oh my god, this is amazingly hilarious, so you want to keep listening to it. It's like, that made me want to finish Shatter Me. These vicious masks and the glass spare taught me that we actually are still missing some retelling aspects in YA. I want some more X-Men retelling influences. And I want some more King Midas, as well as some Robin Hood retellings, because missed opportunity, people. I am apparently so stereotypically Canadian and nice that I'm not even comfortable reading racist terminologies. And Elias Hook kind of like brought that to the forefront of my awareness. Elias Hook also taught me that even a middle-aged man living on an island full of children has a better chance of finding his soulmate than I do. The Diary of King by William Ritter taught me that I will complain in books where everyone ends up together happily ever after, and then I will complain in books where not everyone ends up happily ever after. I was taught by Black Hearts, The Dark Days Club, Speakeasy Speak Love, The Dire King, and Traitor Angels that I would have been killed only a century ago for thinking what I think, but saying it out loud. Renegades by Marissa Meyer emphasized what I've been saying for like my entire life. Nothing good happens at carnivals. They are related to clowns, okay? Nothing good comes out of them. Stay away from them. The Wizards of Once by Cressida Cowell made me very aware that as a child, I'm pretty sure in this situation, I would have been a power-hungry monster. Traitor Angels by Anne Blankman and The Wizards of Once by Cressida Cowell just proves that books always save the day. So you should read just in case you go on an adventure where people are trying to kill you or there's magical powers. Because a book will always, always get you out of a sticky situation. The Magic Misfits has proven what I have been saying for several years now. Neil Patrick Harris is officially good at everything. I don't understand how he does it, but he does it because he's Neil Patrick Harris. Uprooted, Serafina, and The Last Mimsara just reminded me once again this month how awesome dragons are. Ice dragons! Actually, we should really get a YA book with ice dragons in it. I'm like gold for people writing for NaNoWriMo. I got tons of ideas for you. I just can't write. Lost in a book by Jennifer Dunley taught me that we will literally publish anything when there is Disney or Beauty and the Beast slapped on the cover. Not everything Beauty and the Beast needs to be published, people. It's okay to not publish it. This book wasn't horrible. I just don't see why we needed it in this world. <laughs> Refugee by Alan Gratz and Dear Martin by Nick Stone just reminded me that humans are horrible and we seem to be in this like intergalactic battle with either ourselves or some sort of alien species to see who can self-implode faster. And the last thing that I learned this month, and it is an actual lesson, I just honestly didn't know this, I was taught by Uprooted, as well as A Curious Beginning, These Vicious Masks, and The Dark Days Club, that dinner actually used to be used as what we, like, to describe lunch which was like, I kept getting so confused. They were like, okay, we're having dinner at this time and then supper at this time. And I was like, are you hobbits? Why are you having more than one supper? I don't understand. So those are all of the books that I read this month and all the lessons that they taught me. And I hope I taught you something too. Make sure to check the description box down below for all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back. And I hope you have a wonderful start to 2018.